Hi, so fellow students, welcome to Financial 60103, Financial Management, Introduction to Financial Management. So this is the first chapter or the first lecture together with me. I'm Rafti, I'm your lecturer. Uh, I understood that most of you are actually uh, hospitality and tourism students. So this is a finance uh, unit, which is uh, actually kind of there are different levels to it. There are basic, uh, intermediaries, and even advanced level of this particular same topic. So I'll try to simplify it as easy as possible, or as simple as possible, so you could understand it further. Okay, so come, let's start the lecture today. Okay, there will be some announcement here before I begin. This is my email address. You can email me if there's any issues or is there, if there's any questions. So the consultation will be via appointment only on Monday to 4. Now during the MCO, you can uh, make an appointment with me via email to, to meet me on Zoom uh, or just uh, let me know where Zoom or Teams. Okay, there will be no 4 p.m. lecture on uh, today, 13th of April, 2020. So please view the recorded lecture as in this, this uh, lecture. All right, uh, between today, 13th of April, until the 17th of April before 2 p.m. as attendance will be recorded. Those who did not uh, look through this or those who can notify your friends, please let them know that attendance will be taken. All right. Try the questions in the lecture. Okay. We'll discuss this together next week at 4 p.m. The Zoom link will be posted on times. Please follow the times. And uh, stay safe and take care. So let's start with the uh, lecture today. So today's learning outcomes will be understanding and identifying all the basic types of financial management decisions and the role of financial managers. Okay, so you will know the, the, the all kind of basic types of financial management decisions and also the role of financial managers. Financial implications of different forms of business organizations. So different forms of businesses, all right? Goal of financial management and conflict of interest that can arise between owners and managers. So there's only four things that we will go through. Very short and simple lecture. So the topic outline, we'll start with business finance and the financial manager, followed by forms of business organization, the goal of financial management, and the last one is agency program and control of the corporation. Let's begin. So what is finance? All right, what is finance? Came to mind a lot of people do, in, in our daily life, finance is part of life. All right, uh, managing of your money is already a finance actually. So management of money and monetary affairs. Okay, inflow and outflow of your money, deposit, deposit into your ATM, withdrawal of money from the bank, all these are part of finance. All right. So financial manager will always allocate funds available to the firm in the most productive way. So financial manager will reassign the money in the company so that it could be well spent, well expend, uh, well expense at the uh, benefits of the firm. So there's a return to it in the end. It's not wasted for no reason. Same goes to you guys. For example, if you're spending your money, again, your hard-earned salary money, all right, you think where you're going to spend it to. Is it worth it or not? Okay, will, they, will it generate income in the future? Is it possible as an investment or not in the future? So this is part of finance. This is the basic of finance itself when you come to finance. Okay, so let's look into the finance of the, uh, the uh, roles of a financial manager. So uh, this is a very important role in the businesses. Okay, in businesses, the financial managers, or the finance section is very, very important actually. It could be uh, the support of a firm, right? It's the whole support of the firm. Okay, they will look after the firm's cash flow. This is very important. Money go in and out. They will control that. Okay, they will control money going out. Okay, if money coming in too slow, they'll find out why, why is no money coming in, why is there delay of payment, why people owe me money not paying me back. So this is the role of the financial manager. Recording of the outcomes are ac accounting. So do recording, okay, filing and stuff like that uh, in the T section, debit credit and stuff. Okay, that will be falling under accounting. Control and management of cash flow, that will be for the treasury. Okay. All right, these are two main terms like accounting and treasury. So just look through it. Remember that accounting will be recording of outcomes, inflow, outflow of money. Uh, and uh, what you buy from there, okay? Yeah, who you pay. 
drag it down in a journal, in ledger, write, fund by one what you're doing, what is this money you spend on, what is being spent on, and so on and so forth. Management of cash flow, the control of money coming in and going out. All you know, right, you realize that money is coming in too slow, you need to make a call, make some calls to chase after your debtors. All right, money is going out too often or too fast. It's time for you to ask for more credit terms or try to see why is it uh, going so much on the other department? Why is advertising spending so much? Why is marketing spending so much? So this is treasury, all right? Okay, second uh, topic outline for today, which is forms of business organization. So just to let you know, this is very straightforward. There are multiple ways, multiple forms of business organization. The main three will be these three, sole proprietorships, partnerships, and corporation. So I'll do a differentiate all this one by one. So very simple, sole proprietorship, basically somebody or one person owns everything, okay? So if there's any dispute or any problem, they will be sued bankruptcy. So the roti chana, yeah, the uh, goreng pisang or the roadside hawker, those are usually sole proprietorship, all right? Okay, partnership. Partnership, which is uh, a, a partners of a few person forming up a firm with the limit, uh, with the uh, unlimited liability. So, so they are same like the uh, sole proprietorship. The weakness is they might go into bankruptcy. Everybody, okay. So they are not uh, being limited of their debts. All right. So, sole proprietorship is a person, just one person. Partnership is multiple person grouped together to form a firm. So, this is usually a law firms, uh, accounting firms. It could be partnership, depending on how they, how they want to. Uh, how to incorporate the company, okay? So in Malaysia, all this will be uh, listed as enterprises, all right? Enterprises. Uh, or, uh, so partnership, we usually call enterprises. Partnership will be uh, just partnership, okay? Without the Sabiran Bahad, without the SDI BHD for international students. So for corporations, corporation is the owners will be only having limited liability, okay? They're usually larger and uh, they has they have some, uh, what do you call that? Uh, they has uh, professional uh, uh, observations or administrations. So the uh, company, they will be having company secretary, they will be having an audit team to look after it, and they will be, they will be observed by the public, okay? But the downside of this, corporation will be paying a lot of taxes, all right? They need to, uh, as uh, usually a more expensive organization, big organization, Okay, they need to compile, comply with a certain regulations from the government too. So these are three basic form of business organization that uh, you should know. What is it and what 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 is it regarding about? So corporation could be uh, Sabiran Berhad or uh, Berhad. Okay, Berhad means it's a, uh, <laughs> that means Sabiran is a private limited. In Malaysia, we call it SDN, BHD, Sabiran Berhad. There will be a private limited. But if it's Berhad, it's a distant company. So it's a, uh, limited company, okay? It's a public listed company. So, what are goals of the firm in the financial sector? What is the goals of firm, basically? So, what do firms do when you start a business as a, as a business owner or as, a, as the whole of a businesses? What is the reason of a firm exists there? So, first of all, the goals of the firm is always to maximize shareholders' wealth, okay? Just remember this, whatever they ask you, whenever they ask you what is the goals of firm, they were always maximizing shareholders' wealth. All right, how do you maximize shareholders' wealth? By increasing share price, giving a higher dividend. All right, these are samples of uh, how to make your shareholders wealthier or richer. So that means all the shareholders here means owner of the company, owner of the shares of the company. Usually the... Uh, the, the directors, the owners, okay, the, the person that start up, the founders, the core founders, and also those uh, who have partial ownership of the company. So all these are shareholders, all right? So of course, the firm goals is to increase their wealth. So by how? Increasing share price and higher dividend payment, okay? So please note this, uh, profit maximization of a firm is not shareholder wealth maximization. Uh. So earning until to the maximum level. So you know that your product is $100. The cost of it is only 40. So you're maximizing your profit. You want to earn 60% full 
without doing any other operational, without doing extra marketing. So the cost of production, 40%, straight away sell $100, you want to earn $60. $40, $40 is just for the costing. So this profit maximization. But this profit maximization is not necessary shareholder wealth maximization. Nah. So the $60 profit could be reinvested into the company, uh, could be for other expenses that are being spent off. So it does not guarantee the money will go to the shareholder. So it's not that it's not directly related when you say profit maximization, is wealth management maximization. No, no. Okay, it doesn't link that way. So wealth maximization will be only happening if you if the uh, firm is trying to increase the share price, boosting more potential project in the future, uh, releasing more positive uh, news and updates and uh, more more potential in uh, growing in the future. So all these will increase the share price. When share price increase, dividend payments will be uh, dividend payment will be most likely uh, very encouraging because if your project is positive and optimistic, you you guarantee you a higher return, and that you can give out a higher dividends to your shareholder. Okay. The next goals of the firm, the next goal will be preserve stakeholders' well-being. So what is stakeholders? Stakeholders will be your employees, your customers, your suppliers, creditors, owners, and anyone else with a direct economic link to the firm. So these stakeholders is anyone else other than your owners. All right. So why do you want to preserve their well-being? So in other words, you try to uh, make sure they behave, uh, make sure they, uh, they are at your side, make sure they're supportive towards you, and make sure that they give out a good reputation towards the company. So this is one of the goal here, okay? This will make you a global branding. This will make you being well-known. This will make you being respected by the other industry players, all right? We could consider this as social responsibility as well. You see a lot of companies will put a lot, a lot of money into investing back into the society, all right? Uh, planting trees, uh, green economy, and so on and so forth. All these incur extra costs to the company. But why do they do that? One of the reasons is just to uh, get the uh, support from stakeholders or preserve their well-being, okay, to maintain relationship with them. That's why preserving their stakeholders' well-being is part of the goal. Okay. So this overview of finance. Huh? So the financial market to firms meets to maximize market value, to individual is to maximize utility of cons consumption. So like you guys individuals, which is not considered as a, a firm in whole, so you independently are also part of the financial markets. Okay, your goal is to maximize your consumption. Okay, to make sure that you have sufficient money to spend on, uh, on well-being, to get a better life, to get good house, sports car, buy branded LV, Prada, and Gucci, and so on and so forth. This is individual goal. Whereas for firm goals is to maximize their market value, to make sure that the share price will goes up, to make sure that they are still the market leader. So the financial markets play in two roles, one in firms, one in individuals. So what are the financial management decisions? Please remember this. There are only three decisions to remember. The first one is investment decision, which is capital budgeting. Okay. Uh, and the next one will be financing decision. Last one will be working capital management. So what is investment decision or capital budgeting? So this basically is uh, to identify long-term investments or projects that a business will take on. What kind of investment the company will take on? What kind of uh, assets will they want to buy that will generate income in the upcoming future? So this investment, you are putting some money for the expansion or the growth of the company. Or you are putting in money to see more returns in the future. So this is capital budgeting, okay? You budget out money to invest into certain things so that you hopefully will bring you more money in the future, okay? So financing decision, which is capital structure, okay? Capital structure, financing decision. What do you do to support or to finance your decision or finance your firm, okay? How should you pay for your assets if you buy a car? Are you going to pay it by cash from your saving or are you going to buy it by loan? So this is capital structuring, financing decision. Are you taking debts? Uh, are you taking equities? Is it? All right, should we use debts or equities? All right, we'll look through in depth later. And last one will be working capital management. This one is how 
day-to-day -day finances of the firm being managed. So every day your finance are being going in and out. How is it going on? So working capital management could be more like the controlling your cash flow or controlling your your hard cash in your hand. So the money inside your saving accounts, that how you manage it in a daily basis. What you want to eat now? Are you going to eat better in the end end of the week? Are you going to eat better in the and end of the month when you're going to get more salary uh you're gonna get the salary okay you can get a paycheck so you still have a reserve there and still have extra maybe you want to spend more so this is more towards controlling of your cash flow in your daily expenses or your daily finances we call that so this working capital management so let's go to investment decision first so what is investment decision so investment decision incorporates uh, that means involve cash time and risk okay you're looking at the cash that you have in hand how long is that investment and what is the risk will the money just gone or not will you get back money or not and then time will be quite important how long 10 years 20 years 100 years what is the point of investing on something that only get returned at 100 years you might not be there to enjoy it so cash do you have sufficient cash or not if you only have 50 bucks in your bank account you wouldn't be telling people you want to invest on uh, bonds invest on stocks uh, it's kind of unreasonable or not logical okay so investment decision will be including acquiring alternative assets or project for a firm that means you're buying other businesses other small businesses or buying assets or machineries if you are manufacturing you buy machines okay if you're talking about hospitality here yeah, now you talk about hotel management so you're talking about uh, renovation okay uh, uh, changing the uh, investing on the key lock system to be more high tech uh, if you're taking up projects or projects of uh, building a theme park in the in the resorts so all these are actually investment decision okay so usually you have multiple assets and projects are being proposed by other managers or, or fund managers or investment managers or even your your ceos will have uh, new new decisions so usually you will choose the ones that produce the highest return okay the highest return we will call this as the NPV or the net profit value. You'll we'll learn it later on. All right, the net present value or the most exp the most returns on net profit value. Compositions of assets which will best facilitate the operation. Of course, the one that was that will increase your firm's uh, money gen uh, generating money. So you see, like Genting, Genting, uh, in gen Genting involvement involvement into encouraging the uh, the visitors number into the resort what they do is they rebuild the whole theme park as a uh, extra operations to facilitate their uh, hospitality or their hotel uh, businesses in the uh, in the mountain okay of course one of the uh, subsidiary or uh, one of the most uh, earning uh, subsidiary of uh, Genting will be the casino which is also another operation operated to uh increase the whole firm uh hotel uh, businesses or tourism businesses all right okay and usually all this kind of investment decision is hard to reverse if it's the wrong decision okay uh, that's why you need to determine the total amount of assets the firm can afford to so it's hard to reserve for example gunting has been invested to rebuild their theme park they have been invested billions of dollars into it and now if they want to pull off it's gonna be hard what they're gonna do with it when fox pull off they already have a headache but luckily thankfully or fortunately Kenting could afford to build it by themselves if it's another company or a smaller small corporation they might have issues they might need to find new partnerships or new collaborations okay our business risk is perceived by suppliers of capital to the firm so this is supplier uh those who are gonna give uh money to you to consider this as risk so those shareholders will be the one that voicing out all right and last but not least the important part of this is availability of cash because cash is needed for the firm expenses cash is needed for the firm to run so for example like now the current mco period hotel need a lot of cash to sustain if not they will close down all right you see one of the one of the uh, hotel in uh, Ipoh has been uh, declared that they were closed now at the end of the month so i don't remember the name of the hotel but it is quite a pretty big hotel that actually closed now the, this might be due to 
uh, availability of cash. Okay, firms need cash to operate now. You see, for the past two months and uh, and next two few months, the tourism business and the hotel businesses in Malaysia will goes down. This will need them to bite into their savings to bite onto their reserve. So, if all these firms without reserve, they will be having trouble. Okay, government do give some support, but is it sufficient or not? Government support is only to reduce a portion, a small portion of the burden but not all. So all these businesses are sustaining on their own uh, survivability. So those who could not survive will be all out easily. Okay, so this is the importance of having an investment decision. So those who just make huge big investment in this few months ago, uh, especially this kind of uh, tourism businesses that just make investment, they'll be suffering now. They'll be having huge problem. You look at the uh, air, airline company like Asia, like Mars. Even mass having been offered to buy over, uh, to be bought over by some American company, so this is the uh, things that going on here that uh, that will actually what call that uh, causes a, a, a firm or a financial manager to to revise on their investment decision to re, uh, to revise their risk, the cash, and the time. Financing decision. This is the second part. This is capital structures. Okay, this is more towards how to get money to finance your businesses. It could be a combination of both debt and equity. So before you go into debt and equity, what is equity? Equity means you're asking money from people to invest into your company and they become shareholders. So if a, a public listed company, uh, they will release more shares, okay, uh, or companies will release more shares to the public so that they will get equities. All right, IPOs from companies are actually equities. Okay, so they are giving up parts of their shares to get some money to be invested into the company and to boost the money in the company. Whereas that means borrowings, getting money from banks, financial institutions. So this is a two difference between equity and debt. All right, so there are different costs and risks of course. For equity means... Uh, 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 your shareholders will be making a lot of noise. They got the rights to to kick out the CEO and so on and so forth. Whereas uh, for debts means there's the the cost, which is the interest rate. Okay, the interest rate, and then uh, there will be uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, bank charges and so on and so forth. All right. So other than that, there will be two differences under debts. Okay, which is gearing or leverage. So people will be confused. What is gearing? What is leverage? So gearing here, gearing here is part of the financial leverage section. But gearing means percentage of a company funding through borrowing. So a company's uh, whole funding will be borrowing from the bank, 20% of it. The whole company startup computer is $1 million. So 20% of it will be 200000 So this is gearing. You are gearing 200000 from the banks. Okay, leverage, debt incurred for the purpose of investing and obtaining a higher return. So the co the company leveraging on how many on uh, how many uh, how big of their cash to be invested for a higher return. So they take part of the uh, investments or part of their money to be invested further. All right. So people were asking, how do we want to finance the company? Where do we get money? All right. This is uh, in the modern world now. You see, if you watch, uh, if you have the time, go and watch Shark Tank. Okay, Shark Tank. There's multiple season there. So you see, people are pitching for money. So they are pitching for money by giving up equities. Okay, so they are not listed company. They are not. Uh, they are not uh, big companies. They are just maybe individual. They are selling their ideas, but they got no money. They want to sell their idea to get investor, so they can start their idea. So startups, same as startups, they go for series A's. They go for. They go for uh, pitching, business pitching from VCs, from investors, from angels. Okay, this is where they get money from. This is called equity. When they get money from other people, you give up your shares. That is called equity. But if you choose to take from uh, other people, for example, debt, you borrow from your parents, you borrow from financial institutions, banks, or even uh, loan sharks, all this will be considered as debts. Okay, so you clear now. The capital structure is divided into two. You can you either use debt or you can use equity. Okay, that means you borrow. Equity means you incorporate more shareholders by giving up your own shares. Hmm, moving on. Moving on to working capital management. 
So working capital management, please remember the formula given to you. Net working capital is equal to current assets minus current liability. You will see this quite often throughout the semester. Okay, so what is working capital management here? So basically it's managing liquidity by uh, the, managing the current assets and also current liability. So what is current assets? Current assets means uh, uh, easy, uh, liquid assets or tangible assets that you can uh, sell off easily. So for example, like cash okay uh, money in banks so these are current assets current liability are actually uh, debts short-term debts for example like the account the uh, account payable you owe your supplier 30 days terms all these are current liabilities okay uh, so the the opposite of currents here will be done current assets and non-current liabilities so those are not liquid assets and not liquid liability it take long times to pay back all right uh, it take long time for you to uh so sell it away if it's an asset. Okay, so you very important. Why working capital is important? Because you need cash to pay operating expenses, your daily expenses. So, so for example, you guys are students, you need cash in hand to pay for your petrol, to pay for your food, to pay for your drinks. So without cash, you couldn't do anything. Okay, and uh, of course, you will say that uh, uh, you, you have credit card now. But credit card will be your liability to your current liability you need to pay off one month later okay and uh, with good cash or good uh, good liquidity of a company you could attract customers all right uh, and then you could also uh, sustain if there's issue you need inventory to support production okay so if you're a manufacturing company for now the mco shut down all the company but you still need to have money to to be uh, paying off to your workers okay government enforce that you must not uh, cut off your workers pay could not just uh, not pay them you need to constantly pay them like usual so this if you do not have a good capital management the company will break down the company will go off the company will go into bankrupts all right so these are the importance of working capital management so there are two types of market here actually so uh, why do we learn about the market here? The market is just to let you know further. So first one is primary market, all right? Security instruments issued to an investor for the first time. So for example, just now a company issuing uh, shares uh, or issuing IPO, initial public offerings, all this is direct to the person. So it's for example now, I'm a, I'm a, sell, I'm a, I'm a company owner. So you guys uh, are interested to invest on me. So you tell me how much you invest in me, I give you a number of shares. So that is the primary market. First hand from the owner. You take first hand from the owner, the shares first hand from the owner, that is primary market. Okay, so uh, firms will always raise money in the primary market so that the, uh, this, the money will go direct to them. All right, it could be debt or equity funding, of course. But as a secondary market, it's uh, where financial securities are bought and sold. What are financial securities? This is, could be bonds, could be futures, forwards, contracts, options, it could be uh, stocks. Okay, so stock exchange is one of the secondary market. So just now, when you're saying primary market, I issue stairs, I'm the owner, I give you, I sell to you shares. Okay, for example, you, particularly, I sell $50, uh, you give me $50, I give you 5% share. That is primary market. So you selling to another lecturer from another unit. You sell whatever the share I gave it to you just now, 5% share at $50. You sell to the next person at $100 for that for the 5% share of mine. The transaction between you and the other lecturer will be just between both of you. You will receive the money, but not me. Okay, so me as a issuer will not get any funding. The firm will not get any funding. All right, so it's between you and the other person there. All right. You as the investor, the first hand from the primary market will be earning in these kind of situations. So now going to the uh, little problem here in the financial management will be agency problem. Okay, agency problem. Very, very easy to remember this. So when you think about agency problem, agency relationship. So this is principle of stockholders hire an agent to represent, represent an interest. You see a lot of uh, founders and uh, owners of companies, they don't run the company themselves. They hire a CEO. So a CEO is an agent to represent the company or to represent the owners or the founder. Okay, so CEO could be another person. Not all owners will be CEO. Huh? 
All right. And uh, stockholders of what you call it principals here, that means the owner of the companies, hire managers to run the company. So managers are also agents. So what is this agency problem? So simple, the direct definition will be conflict of interest between principal and agent. Okay, principal, uh, principal and agents got conflict of interest. So management goals and stockholders' interests may be different. This is the agency cost. So when you talk about agency problem first, uh, conflict first, the conflict between interest, uh, the conflict of interest between principal and agent. So of course, principal want to earn money, want to maximize uh, wealth. Agents are just to hire, are just people that they hire back to work for them. So what is the motivation for managers to continue uh, earn more money for them? So to them, they just do what they, they are being paid a basic. They do what they just uh, supposed to do, and you just shake click. They are not going to work harder. Why would you want to work harder? So there's no reason for them to work harder, right? So if I were to tell you, I only pay you two thousand bucks to uh, to what do you call it to attend my class. Uh, I give you two thousand dollars to just att to attend my class. So will you do extra by attending other classes or not? You won't because I own only me paying you two thousand, but not the rest of the people. Okay, so the motivation is me paying you the two thousand. It's not the rest. So this will cause a conflict between the principal and the agent. So this conflict of interest will incur costs. Okay, because of the difference of thoughts will incur costs. The agency, agency cost means these agents or these managers are incurring costs for the company by not working efficiently to maximize shareholder profit. Okay, you see a last, last phrase there. Managers may be satisfier rather than maximizer. So why do they want to work so hard? Why do they want to do so much? They should just do to satisfy the SOP. So if the company give them a target 10,000, then do 10,000. Why would they want to do 100,000 for? No point doing in the extra 90,000. The next month, the expectation will be higher. To solve the agency issues, they should always need to have controls. Okay, management, management need to make optimal decision Again, okay, management need to make optimal decision if adequately compensated. So how do they want to, uh, so how the principal encourage management to make uh, optimal decision? So you see just all those managers that uh, we are talking about, they wanted to have uh, compensations, right? They wanted to have incentive or initiative, like what I tell you just now, I pay you 2,000 to come to my class. That is my, uh, is sort of bribing you. It's just not, not bribe, bribe means uh, pay you to not, to do something else. I'm encouraging you that, that the monetary incentive is to encourage you to attend the class, okay? So what are the uh, ways that they could do would be incentive payments or uh, what you call it commission-based work, okay? If you know that how much of sales you reach, you get how many percent of commission, this will motivate manager to work harder or giving them share options and bonuses, okay? Uh, reaching KPI, they get bonuses or doing uh, doing out of the box uh, or so on and so forth. They will be given good bonuses and even could be given uh, some shares. And in the end, it could be part of the shareholding teams, shareholders teams. Okay, corporate control. So corporate control means a takeover of, uh, by another corporate. So another bigger control will take over as the management group. So this will, will encourage the, the, the management team to be uh, afraid. And uh, because once they got taken over, they could be fired and new team will be taking over by, will be coming in to take over, for, uh, which is hired by the new control corporations. Okay. So this very commonly happening in uh, the business world. Okay. So managers might be afraid because of this kind of threat. That's why they try to work hard, even though sometimes they are not being compensated with incentive or even shares, but they're trying to reserve their rice bowl. Okay. So here are some of the questions that uh, I give you guys to go home and think about it after listening to this lecture. Please prepare some answers to this. And when we come in next week on, uh, on the 20th of April, 4 p.m., uh, the lecture, the second lecture, 4 p.m. on Monday, we will discuss it together on Zoom. Okay, I will ask students randomly and uh, attendance will be taken by the way. So please come and see me then. So I will hope to see you guys at Zoom uh, next week during 4 p.m.
Okay, I will still upload the lectures, pre-recorded lectures for the for the 10 p.m. session, uh, for the 10 a.m. session. So please look at my updates time to time in your times. Okay, so that's all for today's lecture. Thank you for your kind attention and uh, stay safe.